Hey everyone, so I'm doing my tutorial that I talked about on doing a woodland Indian. And so um, I showed the paints at the beginning of the video, and I am starting with this guy and just base painting a layer on the skin. First la layer of base paint, and what I've used is I've taken the game color 66 tan and mixed it uh, one to one with game color dwarf skin. I also like to use a little bit of water to thin it down with um, Liquitex Flowade as well, just to thin it. I won't cover the entire model um, with the skin, but, but I will usually cover some of the jewelry and things like that. And this way, when I do paint it over, it's only a thin coat, then there won't be any spaces where there's just primer. Okay, I'll be right back once I've finished doing the base paint. So I've finished painting up the first base paint layer on the skin. Now um, you can probably see that it does look kind of red on the skin, and that is the tan in the game color tan. It's interesting, I never really thought of tan as having a lot of red in it. This particular color does, it, it appears to have a fair bit. If you look up tan in Wikipedia, there's like a number of different types, but none of them really seem to look exactly like this. But I've always found this color to be really nice when mixed with the dwarf skin to create this sort of um, this skin look um, for um, Native American skin. And so this will be diluted down and lightened up. It will not look this red. And um, in the future, I'll be adding um, other layers and even a little bit of yellow at the end. So you'll see um, it will change quite a bit. Um, for the next step, I'm going to just paint the cloth on the native, and um, I'll be using G, excuse me, uh, Vallejo 7917 beige for that layer. I'll have other kinds of, I guess, almost webbing or straps and, and bags and things. I'll be painting other colors, but that's what I'm going to start with. At this point, I'm just continuing to work my way through the model and getting the rest of the base paint on. And um, what I'm going to be doing next is this bag that he's wearing with a strap. And then, so I'll paint the strap, and I'm going to do that as um, Games Workshop for Citadel's Mornfang Brown. And then I'll also just finish off the shoes. And I like to use um, Game Colors Charred Brown for that. Just to, and You could use the same color browns. A lot of the... Um, I guess technique that I do for woodland Indians really relates to the skin, um, but I use a variety of browns for wood, like on the wood handles and the gun, um, different sort of articles of clothing, and also for the shoes. So I'll just start um, finishing off the rest of the base paint before we get to working on the skin.
So I finished the moccasins and the gun and the bag that with the strap with that bag. And um, for the gun, I did end up using Vallejo ma Mahogany Brown, which is 7846. And um, I like using, and I didn't just do it on the gun, I also did the handle of the tomahawk um, the same, the mahogany. I like using Mahogany Brown for wood. Um, I've used other colored browns as well. One of the things that I do like though is I like having different browns on the same um, figure to simulate different things. And as an example, where you have the handle for the tomahawk next to this bag, it's nice to have it to be a different color so they don't just blend in together. And so I keep my wood sort of like a separate color. And then, um, you know, like it's just really a matter of personal preference as to um, how much you want to vary your browns. This can be done a lot of different ways, but I have a tendency to leave certain fine details to the very end. Now you have to be careful because like if you're wanting to paint some of these decorative pieces of cloth and, and necklaces at the very end, after you've done your highlighting, you have to be really, really careful because you can mess up all the layers of highlighting you did if you make a mistake. I just have a tendency to prefer it that way rather than doing it now because the other negative is on little pieces when you do multiple layers of highlighting you can end up getting that on your necklaces anyway because it's such a small amount of um, sculpt, you know, sculpting material that, you, that it can be easily covered and then even like these earrings um, and so you, you, you'll end up having to almost paint them over again anyway so I just save those kinds of pieces for the end bigger pieces like the gun and the bag I, I like to do beforehand I, w I have saved the metal um, for the metal parts of the gun to do afterwards. Um, but yeah, so now, so really all I have left to do before I start doing the skin is I'm going to paint the horn, um, the powder horn, the um, hair, and then as the, the head of the tomahawk. And then I really should be ready to start working on the eyes and then the skin. Be right back. So at this point I've painted the first layer of paint on the tomahawk head. I still have to correct some of the wood in there, you know, where the top of the shaft goes through the head of the tomahawk. And I have the horn painted, and I've painted the hair um, black. And so what I'm about to do now is to paint the eyes. I did notice, um, oh, and I should just mention that um, when I painted the horn it was Ushapti Bone. And when I painted the black, it was Games Workshop, um, both Games Workshop, Shopti Bone, and then Abaddon Black for the black on the hair. Now, um, I do have to find like a good balance when I paint eyes for thinning the paint. I don't like it to be really thick, like right out of the pot in most cases, and I also don't like it really thin where it's going to go into the recesses and of the model and be hard to paint on. And so I just usually like to put a little bit of water to thin it out a bit, but enough where it's not going to run. So it really just kind of takes a bit of experience. I have noticed that on this particular model, um, the left eye actually isn't really as defined sculpting wise as the right. I think it's going to be fine. I, there is enough definition that it should be fine. I don't know if it was just the cast on this one. When picking this model for the video, I didn't really notice it um, at a distance. It's not really that noticeable. But under the magnifying glass that I have here, it is a little bit noticeable. So I will have an um, attempt now to paint eyes on camera. Um, and if I have to correct myself too many times and get frustrating, I will just fast forward to the next stage when I'm done. Oh, and I should mention that I use a different brush for painting eyes. <laughs> Another point. I don't use a fine detail brush. I actually use a triple zero that I have that I keep just mainly just for painting eyes. One of the reasons that I do like to 
Pain Eyes at this stage is that there's a lot of work sometimes, depending on the sculpting of the eye, to cover up um, areas where you're hitting into the recesses and on the eyebrow and things. And once you kind of get it, and it's always nice to have your base paint for the skin that you're working with ready and handy to make those corrections. But once you're satisfied, then when you do the wash stage, it really can tie those recesses together and make it look a lot less notable, noticeable, less noticeable if you um, did happen to catch some of those recesses with your paint. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I really try to take care of this brush, this triple zero, and only use it for this and keep a nice tip for this reason. Without a good tip, I just find it's really hard to paint eyes. Having a little bit of trouble with the second one here. Actually, it's not looking too bad. I have to clean up the white and the tan a little bit on that one, but... Like I said, um, if you can get it to the point, in my opinion, where you're pretty happy with it before the wash, then I think by the time you're done with the wash, you'll be much happier with it. Oh, there we go. A little dab of white to one side. I think under the magnifying glass, he's looking pretty good. So I think, again, after the wash, and particularly when you're not using the magnifying glass, he's going to look pretty decent. My buddy Tristan over at Atlas said something years ago that I never forgot. I used to not paint eyes, and I think it's fine if you don't. And some models I have a hard time with because I don't think they're really sculpted amazingly to paint eyes. But having said that, once Tristan said that um, he feels the model kind of comes to life for him when the eyes are painted, they kind of come alive. And I kind of chuckled at the time when he said that, but to be honest, over the years I kind of feel the same way. They really do almost seem like they have a soul behind them more once you paint the eye. I say that sort of in a metaphysical way, not not serious, but all right. So not sure how well we can see here, but there we go, the eyes. So now the next stage for me would be to do a wash 
over the skin. And actually, I noticed, um, and I, I end up doing corrections just like always as I go along. But um, what uh, I think the next stage is going to be is to actually put some Agrax Earthshade on the skin. And I've also hit some black on my gun, which I'll have to be putting black on it anyway, but I inadvertently did that probably when painting the eyes or the hair. So, Agrax Earthshade on the skin, just to bring out some of the recesses. And then from there, we're going to start the highlighting of the skin. So I have my GW Shade Agrax Earthshade, and I've already put some in my painting tray here, and I've added one drop of water to about three or four drops of Agrax Earthshade. I just like to thin it down a little bit. Now, I don't really want this um, on the... I don't mind it being on the gun, but I just don't, I don't really want this on the beige for the clothing at this point. I also don't want it on the horn. This is a fairly strong wash. Um, it doesn't completely take away the color that you're working on, but I know that I'll be highlighting up a fair bit with these color patterns, so I'm not really worried about it. It's just really to get some of the darker detail in and things like the fingers and musculature and things. I will be doing a, a glaze in a later step. I'll talk about that later. So this is just to put a bit of a foundation on it. Okay, there we are. So at this stage um, where I start to do highlighting on the skin, I do want to start thinning the paints a bit more. So um, not so much so they're like a milky consistency like you would with airbrushing, but enough that um, it's really, really thin, still holds its color, but it's going, it's going to allow a lot of the color underneath to still show. So like um, it's not going to be like masking the color underneath. And so what I have for the next stage is a ratio of one of the tan we used before and one of the dwarf skin, dwarf skin, but then now model color 7815 basic skin tone a half. So one to one to a half of basis, basic skin tone. This is going to start lightening it up a little bit further. Point. You'll want to follow the musculature and the raised features as much as possible.
So now at this point, um, I've done my first highlight. And now I'm ready to do another highlight. And I use the same formula as before, except now, in addition to the 110, the one dwarf skin, and the half of the basic skin tone, now I'm also adding another half to the ratio of Games Workshop's Averlin Sunset. At this point, I, theoretically, I mean, I am trying to just capture a little less of the highlights, like a little bit of the sharper highlights. Um, certain flat surfaces on the very top, I might still, because I'm still really thinning this and using it kind of like, um, a f it's sort of like the in-between a highlight and a filter in some ways is what I'm hoping to do. So at this point I've done the last skin highlight that I'm going to do and really what I want to do now um, before I do a filter stage is I want to get some of the details painted like the black on the gun, I want to get some of the colored um, jewelry items and earrings and things as well as some of these, um, this I'll actually be painting as like a decorative band, you could also paint it like cloth and then just like some of the straps on the holding like necklaces and th and things and and even the um horn gunpowder powder horn i'll be painting the straps that are sort of um here uh, holding below the knee the um sort of pants that he's wearing so yeah so there'll be you can really choose a lot of things you want to do with this um but because i'm painting this one up as an ottawa i tend to use um yellow green and red um particularly the yellow and the green Compare, as compared to my Iroquois and um, Delaware and natives. And so I'll be using Everlyn Sunset for yellow, um, Vallejo, deep green, uh, 7970 for the greens, and then Mephiston red from Games Workshop. Um, and then I'll be, for the straps um, of various kinds for necklaces, I'll be using XV88 by Citadel or Games Workshop. Okay and then Abaddon Black for the gun. So I'm gonna paint those details and then I'll just come back. So at this point, um, I've painted in those jewelry details and the leather straps. And one thing I did do, I don't know if I mentioned before, but when I did paint the um, the, the tomahawk, I, I used um, Games Workshop's Mechanicus Standard Gray for the, the gray and I typically would use the administratum gray the really light one but um, I don't have any at the moment so I just ended up using um, Games Workshop's Dawn Stone really watered it down just to sort of highlight the tomahawk um, head. Now um, at this point what I would now do is I would use Army Painter's um, Soft Tone. I'm just going to move out here for a moment. I would use Army Painter's Soft Tone on everything but um, the really dark browns. Like, I wouldn't do this on the gun or the brown bag, but I would do it pretty much on the rest of the model. Now, when I use this, I don't just use it straight out of the bottle. I do add probably... Um, a drop of water for every two, one or two drops of soft tone. Probably more like two drops of soft tone to one drop of water. 
I just find that um, this is a, they call it an ink, but, and it will go into the recesses in, in the way that a wash will to a degree, but it also is a little thicker in its properties, and it will actually have a very thin layer across the model to sort of um, soften some of the highlights that were done. Now, it really is up to you whether you want to do this. I do find that a wash is necessary at this stage for the beige. Um, but uh, and this will really look nice. It's a bit of a dirtier look, but I, I kind of like it in this case. Um, but on the um, skin itself, it will create a really nice um, soft tone, um, as it's called, uh, across that, and you'll still be able to see um, the highlights and the and the varying degrees of the work that we did. And in particular, if you add a little bit of water, um, I find that it does help in this particular application, um, see some of those highlights just a little bit more. So um, what I'll do is I will mix some of that up and cover the model and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have that mixed up and I'm gonna just proceed to cover the model a bit. Um, I'm using a small brush and part of that is so I can also wipe away where there may be some excess One thing I did notice I forgot to do is in the hair there is a feather that I have to paint and so I will do that um, at one point before finishing the video. I painted it black and then I forgot, to, forgot all about it. As you can see as I put this on I tend to also wipe it away um, as I'm working with it because I find that it provides a nice glaze either way but um, the last thing it's not like um, exactly like quick shade the thicker enamel product that uh, I call it an enamel product but it's it's a really thick product and it really pools this one pools less so but um, you still do need to do a little bit of control I find So now I will come back and I will paint that feather white in the process and I come back and I'm gonna just do the same to the gun in the bag. Hey everybody, so I did go ahead and paint that feather. I just painted it with white um, GW white scar with a little bit of slashes of red in there for some detailing and I used um, model wash Vallejo gray um, as well just to sort of give it some texture in there in between the grooves of the feather. And so while uh, I was doing that, I did take this off the handle here, the Citadel handle, and I used what I've been doing for all my Musket and Tomahawks collection, and I used Game Color Earth as my base paint for the base. This was um, just a regular um, 25 millimeter square base, and I used a little bit of um, the um, quick drying, I think it's called Drydex. Uh, it's just a quick plaster, drying plaster, and I use a sculpture tool. And then um, straight without diluting um, Agrax Earth Shade um, from GW. Now, um, yeah, in this case I don't dilute it. I like to I like it to be um, as dark as possible on there, and it's still drying a bit. You can see it's a little shiny in a couple of the wells. I find that um, by the time I'm done putting flock on it, that it looks a little bit like roots and um, kind of uneven earth in between things when I do this sort of texture, and I quite like it. So um, I will actually just do a little uh, turnaround on the turntable of the finished model after I've put the flock and grass on it that I use. And I hope that you enjoyed this little video. I don't typically do these sort of tutorials, but um, I'd had some requests for a video like this. And a while back I said I would do this as sort of a celebration of my 500th video. And so it's taken me a while to do it. And um, this is a bit of a little bit of a learning experience as I've never done an instructional video like this before. So hope you guys found it useful or anyone else that's looking how to paint a woodland Indian.
and talk to you later.